Hello watchers and dear subscribers, this is again Shrex from SmartHerd. Welcome to your 23rd Android app development tutorial. In this tutorial, I am going to teach you activity life cycle in Android like you have never seen before on YouTube. Now, let's proceed. Earlier, our codes were like this. Main activity extends action bar activity and inside our main activity, we just override it a on create method. Now, apart from on create method, there are large number of methods that are present in our super class action bar activity or you can say activity, right? Now, these methods are on create, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, on restart and finally on destroy methods. Now these methods whenever you run your application are executed one by one but till now we have just used our on create bundle method so we will see the significance of all these methods one by one how they are executed what are their life cycles and what are their significance right now let's proceed here I have made an application that has the two activity right on click of a button in the first activity, we are able to navigate to the activity B with the help of the explicit intents. Now, here is our launcher screen, right? Now, when you click on your application, right? As soon as you click on your application, the on create method is executed, right? Now, inside our on create method, it is recommended to initialize all the variables and widgets, right? Now, soon after the on create is executed, on start methods get executed right now till now guys our activity screen or application is not visible to the user right now within a fraction of time after the on start method the on resume method is executed now as soon as the on resume is executed user are able to watch their activity screen in front of them that means user can interact with your application or user can interact with the activity right in simple words, the activity A gets visible and user can interact with it, right? Now in the activity A, we are having a button. On the click of button, we are able to navigate to the activity B with the help of the explicit intents as we saw in the previous tutorials, right? Now, as soon as the user clicks on the button, on pause method get executed in case of activity A. So our activity A gets in the paused state, right? now. Soon after on pause is executed, on create method in case of the activity B gets executed. Now guys, here another activity life cycle in case of activity B has been started, right? Now after on create in activity B, on start method in case of activity B get executed. Now soon after no time, the on resume method in case of activity B is executed and user is now able to see the activity B in front of him, right? That is now activity B gets visible and user can interact with it. Now it do not means activity A has been destroyed. It has just gone to the pause state and it has got invisible. Now at the time when on resume in case of activity B is executed, simultaneously on stop method in case of activity A gets executed. Now the activity gets invisible and the only screen that appears in front of the user is the activity B, right? Now, what happens when user press this back button? Now, user is having fun with activity B. Now, suddenly he thinks that he should navigate back to the activity A. So in that case, he just press this back button on the screen, right? Now, as soon as he press this back button, the on pause method in case of activity B gets executed, right? Now, soon after on pause method, on stop method get executed in case of activity B, right? Now, after on stop method, it then execute the on restart method in case of activity A, right? Now, after restart, it executes again the on start method. Now guys, you can see after on restart, it is not executing the on create method. So that is why always initialize your variables in case of on create so that your variable value will not be initialized to zero when your activity A restarts right now. Soon after on start is executed, after that again, then activity B goes to the destroyed phase. That is on destroy method is executed and the activity B disappears or get destroyed 
it get destroyed because on resume method in case of activity A is executed and user is again able to interact with the activity A. Now activity B is no longer displayed as it is destroyed. Now after that if user gets bored with your application if he do not wants to continue using your application then he press the back button. Now as soon as he press the back button in that case on pause is again executed then after that on stop is executed then soon after on stop is executed on destroyed is executed now finally the application ends or the activity a disappears right now finally in this way both the activities comes to end and this is all the life cycle of the android activity life cycle this is the best way i can demonstrate to you if you're getting confused guys now let us recall this activity lifecycle once again now when we start our application on create is executed we initialize all the variables after that on start then after that on resume is executed then user is able to interact with activity a right now after that when we click on the button in activity a to navigate to the activity b in that case on pause is executed in case of activity a and simultaneously on create is executed in case of activity B. Here the life cycle of activity B gets initialized. Now soon after on create on start is executed then after that on resume is executed and simultaneously on stop is executed in case of the activity A and the activity A gets invisible because the activity B gets visible and user is able to interact with the activity B right now after that if user press the back button then on pause is executed then soon after on pause on stop is executed then simultaneously on restart is executed in case of activity a right now again the on start is executed then after that the on destroy method in activity b so activity b gets destroyed and it becomes invisible or disappears then simultaneously then on resume is executed in case of activity a and user is again able to interact with the activity a right now if user press the back button again then again on pause is executed then on stop then finally on destroy method and nothing appears in front of the user right both the act activity a also get disappeared or destroyed so hope the things are clear guys you got something out of it in the next tutorial i will jump onto the eclipse and show you the codes how the activity lifecycle codes works and how it is very useful for our application point of view if you want to make a real-time application then you have to make use of all these methods right so stay tuned guys catch you guys in next tutorial and meanwhile if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below my video this is Shrek from smarter signing off thank you and have a good day